Boy, Mike was on this side. So what you do is you're doing a makeover. You might like put on some fancy clothes. So in this case, we're gonna put on this fancy clothes. Does anybody know what that is? What is it? Astros jerseys. Anybody know who number two is? Bragman, that's right. It's Alice Bragman's jersey. Might be his last year in Houston. We'll see. So you're gonna put this on, and it's the white, it's the white jersey, right? It's pretty awesome. You can do your best to put that on. And then for the girl over here, what do you think we're gonna put on her? If we're gonna do a makeover, what would we do? A fancy dress. You think we have a fancy dress in here? Yes, we do. Let's see if you can, can I don't know, would this fit? Let's see, can you still be seen? There you go, something like that. Oh, that looks good. All right, so fancy dresses on. And what color are these fancy dresses? White. White. In the gospel today, Jesus had a fancy makeover. What color was his garments? Yes, ma'am. White. And it says in the scripture that there's no fuller on earth that could bleach them. Do you know what a fuller is? Do your parents ever clo clean your clothes when they get really dirty? Y'all never get dirty though, right? Okay, but if they were to... Oh yeah, you're pointing at your brother. He's like, yes, he has dirty clothes. <laughs> what, what solution do your parents put in your clothes to get them clean again? Maybe the grown-ups can help you if you're not sure. What would it be? Yes. Bleach! Right? So, so what they're saying is Jesus has such bright white clothes that there's no bleach on earth that can make them so bright. So what happens is our two makeover folks here, they're wearing such white, bright clothes that it hurts their eyes to look at it. So I want you guys to pretend like their clothes are so bright that it's burning your eyes. How would you look at that? Would you be like, oh my gosh, it's so bright. But what happened was Jesus was taken up to the mountain. He was transfigured. He was changed. And the apostles that were there with him, they saw Jesus and they saw how bright he was. And they're like, whoo, that's too bright for us. Why? Because God did that to show the power of his son. He said, I'm bringing my son into the world, the savior of the world, the son of God is here in the world and he's shining so brightly. He's shining so brightly that you can't even look at him because he's so bright. My friends, that's what happens when we experience God is that we're changed. We're changed and we're made even more amazing and more beautiful. And so God does some amazing things for us. Like he would put this crown on our head. Like that. Can you, I don't know, can you hold that without it falling off maybe? Is it going to work? Or maybe God says, you know what, I'm going to give you some beautiful pearls like these. And look how much, oh, whoops, there goes the crown. And then he might say, here's some flowers for you too. And so we are changed, we're transformed because our God loves us so much. And what the Lord tells us is the same thing that he told Jesus. Like y'all picked up on scripture, right? What happened when Peter said, hey Lord, it's good that we're here. We should put some tents up for Moses and Elijah. We should stay here. And then what happened? Did y'all pick up what happened in Scripture? There was something that covered it. Yes. There was a, like on a cloudy day, what happens? There it is. Clouds. Right. A cloud appears. A cloud is a reminder that God is present. And then there was a voice that came from heaven. And that voice was who? It was God. It was the voice of God saying what? Yes? This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. You see, my friends, the love of God changes us and it transforms us. It makes us even more beautiful than we ever thought we could be. And the voice of God says, you are my beloved son. You're my beloved daughter. That means no matter what happens in your life, no matter what sin you might commit, no matter what bad grade you might get on an assignment, no matter what happens at work, if you have a bad day at work, God's still going to love you. He's going to say what he said to Jesus. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. And we're changed. We're transformed to be more like God. Now here's something else that's really amazing and really beautiful about God. Is that the Lord gave Jesus the opportunity to be transfigured. His physical appearance changed. But sometimes God changes us. And what might happen to us? Do you want to help out? Why don't you stand up? What happens to us if God changes us? Why don't you step up here on the steps? God touches our hearts with his love, and boom, what happens? What changes in you? you your, your, your outfit hasn't changed. You don't have a beautiful crown or beautiful dress or an awesome Alex Bregman jersey. What happened to you? What's changed in you? I love God. 
You love God, but what's changing you? What happens? What else changes in us besides our outward appearance? Yes, the soul, our heart. You see, my friends, we're changed on the inside to be more like God. And we don't have to change and put on a beautiful, awesome, amazing dress. So we don't have to put on awesome jewelry. Sometimes God changes us on the inside, and he does that a lot. You know another time God changes us? It's what we're getting ready to celebrate right after the homily, the liturgy of the Eucharist. We are changed because we receive Jesus, and then we become more like him. And you might not be able to see it because she still looks the same as she did when she walked up here. But her inside's being changed. She's being shaped and transformed to be like Jesus. So grown-ups, don't take that gift very lightly. During the Eucharistic revival, we're reminded that when we receive the Eucharist, we are changed on the inside. Our souls love more because God continues to love us. So as we continue our celebration today, we thank God for his gift of love. We thank God for his gift of love, of of changing us. And sometimes we look amazing and beautiful and we're made over, but we're always made over on the inside because God is shaping us and forming us and making us more like him. My friends, we are so blessed by this gift of faith that God gives us to believe in his son Jesus who came into our world to take away sin. Gift of Jesus who changes and transforms our hearts, who gives us the gift of the Eucharist so that we can be more like him. As we continue our prayers and celebration today, we ask the Lord to continue to shape, transform us, to help us to be more like Jesus, because we're so blessed to be his sons and daughters. Thank you guys so much for your help. You guys can go back and have a seat if I can get... No, you're going to give it back, please. Thank you, though. Let's stand together.